property here is fundamental and key because property represents the arrangement we have, the agreement we have. So this applies, obviously, to my home. Let's say I owned a, um, it applies to if I owned a, um, a comedy club. Let's say I owned a comedy club. And you wanted to perform at my comedy club. And I said, look, you can perform at my comedy club. You can say whatever you will want, but you can't swear. You can't use the F word. I, in my comedy club, you can't use the F word. Am I restricting your freedom of speech? No. I'm limiting your ability to speak in my comedy club. I'm restraining your speech in my comedy club. Absolutely. But it's mine. That's what it means. Right? Now, I, I don't think I could make any money if I actually did that. Do you know any comedian, any comedian out there who goes through a whole show without saying the F word 57 times at least? So I don't know that comedy clubs could exist if, uh, if uh, property owners restricted uh, what they said, but they could. And one way they could do it is, for example, in the 1960s, um, now here, here was partially by law, but uh, one of the things you could do is, is not invite certain comedians on your stage. So if you don't invite certain comedians to the stage when you own a comedy club, is that restricting their free speech? No. Is that restricting what gets said on the stage of your comedy club? Yes. Now, notice what happened in the 1960s. And, and, and here I want, I, I, one of my goals is for, for you to appreciate the fact, the, uh, in a sense, um, counterintuitive fact, that we actually have more free speech today our free speech rights are better protected today than maybe they've ever been protected in American history. But you know that in the 1960s it was illegal, illegal, to say the F word on private property in a public setting. So the government was now dictating what could and could not be said on my property. So. When Lenny Bruce um, did his comedy shtick during the 1960s, Wes, thank you, $75, really appreciate that. Thank you. You guys amazing today. Thank you. When Lenny Bruce did his shtick, his routine, comedy routine in the 1960s, and started to use the F word regularly as part of the act, and, and, and partially he did it because he knew the kind of response it would get. Partially he did it because he knew he was the first one to do it he would get arrested. Not kicked out of the club by the owner who had said, don't use it. No, he would get arrested. And the show would end, would stop. He spent many a night in jail for saying the F word on stage. I mean, one of the beauties today is you can pretty much say anything you want on a stage today, and you're not going to get arrested. Unless you literally threaten somebody. I mean, it turns out you can even go on stage and slap somebody and not get arrested. But you can say anything you want, insult anybody you want, speak appropriately, inappropriately, horribly, disgustingly, whatever. And you will not get arrested today. That's a good thing. Now, it's still true that in, on radio, there are seven bad words you're not allowed to say. And... Uh, the, the argument there is it's the government airwaves, they set the rules, it's as if they're prop, private property, right? It's as if it's their private property. Um, that's a problem with having public ownership of the airwaves. See, they lease them to the radio stations. They don't sell them. So the government asserts the ability to control what's said in the name of private property in the name of the fact that they own it. But you cannot say certain words in public 
it, it couldn't say in the 1960s without getting arrested. Now note that what happened was that some comedy clubs didn't invite Lenny Bruce to perform, not because they didn't want him to perform, not because they objected to what he was saying, but because they were afraid the police would come in and arrest him. And that would disrupt their business. And they didn't want that reputation, and they didn't want their customers to have to uh, 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 you know, experience a police raid, and they didn't want the show to be disrupted. So they didn't invite Lenny Bruce. Now, who was violating his rights in those cases? Was it the club owners who didn't invite him? Or was it the government who had a law that said he needed to be arrested? It's the government. The government was violating his rights, not the club owners. And indeed, the government was not only violating Lenny Bruce's rights, and this is important, the government was violating the property rights and, in a sense, the free speech right of the property owner, the club owner. He wanted certain speech to be expressed in his club, and it is the government that stopped him. So the government is here violating Lenny Bruce's rights, putting him in jail, restricting his speech, and it's violating the club owner's rights, the platform's rights, if you will, by making it impossible for them to employ Lenny Bruce to actually perform on stage. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.